the model work in Thunderbirds and all those types of shows is very specific. I suppose the modern way of filmmaking is to, you know, to make you feel like you're traveling much more with the vehicle or much more in the center of action, whereas you know, the Derek Medding style of filmmaking is that you're an observer. And if you go back and look at Thunderbirds, they would make their models filthy. But it's a technique that I think Derek Medding's in the 60s perfected, and they had this great sort of eye for making things look realistic. When does Thunderbird 4 look the best? When it's just absolutely filthy. It looks like it's actually gone out on mission. So our models, we would dirty them down and put them on camera. And you know, quite often, it was a building or a vehicle or whatever, we'd look at it and go, oh, it's not dirty enough. So when you actually see a model in real life by, under normal light, it looks very, very worn in and dirty. But and in front of a camera, by the time you've lit it, it loses about 70% of the dirtying down. So it's a skill to actually look through a camera and try to make a judgment. We're not kidding ourselves or kidding anybody. We know when you look at these effect shots, no one's gonna think this is real life. It's never gonna look like, you know, reality. You know, when Thunderbird 2 flies, it's gotta look really heavy. Not for one second do you buy the fact that it's anything other than the model. You're not looking to go, oh my God, it looks real. That's what they were aiming for. You know, I think that's really important that, that their special effects, they wanted them to hit realism, but they didn't, you know, at that point they weren't able to. And so it's toys come to life, but really good toys come to life. Not the sort of toys that you can own when you're a kid, but the sort of toys that maybe you aspire to own later on, the sort of toys that we're now surrounded with here.